Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. For this lesson, we're just going to work through three quick problems, illustrating each of the coordinate systems that we went over last time. So to start off, I'm going to do a simple example in Cartesian coordinates. And as a review, our equations of motion for the Cartesian coordinates can be written for position, velocity, and acceleration. So everything's very simple, just taking the de time derivative of each of the pieces. Now, to illustrate this, let's actually look at an example. We want our position vector to be time varying. And the variation that we're going to choose is 1 half t squared in the i direction and 2 cosine of pi times t in the j direction. And finally, nice constant 10 in the k direction. And we're just going to take the time derivative a couple of times in order to find the values for velocity and acceleration. So taking the time derivative once, we end up with t squared becoming 2t, and this just becomes a t in the i direction. The derivative of cosine of pi t is negative sine of pi t times pi. So we end up with a negative 2 pi times sine of pi t. That's all in the j direction. Taking the time derivative of the constant, we end up with a zero. All right, then to find acceleration, we just take the time derivative one more time. Time derivative t, just one. Take the time derivative of sine t, we end up with cosine of t, or cosine of pi t. So this is going to be a negative 2 pi squared cosine of pi t in the j direction. And then again, the derivative of constant is zero. So now we need to choose a time and actually figure out what the values are for a specific time. So let's choose time equal to one second. So plugging this in, we have a position of one half i plus two times cosine of pi, and cosine of pi is negative one. So this becomes a negative two in the j direction. And then the k doesn't change. So it's just going to be 10k. Our velocity is going to be 1 in the i direction. Sine of pi is going to be 0. So we can just leave this as 0 in the j direction. And then again, we have 0 in the k. Finishing off this problem, our acceleration is going to be 1 in the i direction. And then we need to plug in pi again. So this becomes a negative 1. So we end up with plus 2 pi squared in the j direction and then zero in the k direction. So really quickly, let's draw this out and just look at the x and y axes. So our position is one half in the i direction and negative two in the j direction. So we're gonna end up with something down here. Not too worried about getting this perfect, just wanna kinda of get a feel for what's going on. So this is our position. We're moving at a velocity of one i. So our velocity is moving directly to the right. And then we have an acceleration of 1i plus something very large in the j direction. So this is going to be something like this. And again, these aren't perfect, just a rough draw. Okay, with the Cartesian done, let's move on to cylindrical coordinates. Again, let's start off by writing down the equations that we know. So this applies to anything in cylindrical coordinates. So now let's go ahead and look at a specific problem. We're going to look at a particle traveling along a spiral. And this spiral is going to be defined by r is equal to 1.2 theta. And we're interested in finding the velocity and acceleration vectors at a theta of pi. So this is going to be our position vector and we want to find the velocity and the acceleration. Uh, one last piece of information, we need to know the rotation rate of this particle, or how this particle is moving in some way. We're going to say that the movement of the particle is defined by some constant rotation rate, some constant theta. So this bar is also connected to the particle, and that's going to be moving at a constant theta dot. We're going to say that this theta dot is going to be 2 radians per second. Now we have all the information we need to find the velocity and acceleration. 
So let's start off by plugging into our position vector. So we know r. r is 1.2 theta. And we said that this was in the ur direction. Well, we know what theta is because we have that specified. And so we can actually plug that in as well. And so we have 1.2 pi in the ur direction. So this distance right here is 1.2 pi. Our velocity, uh, we need to actually do a little bit of work to find. R dot is just going to be the time derivative of R. And that's going to end up as 1.2 theta dot. So our first term here is 1.2 theta dot in the UR direction plus R again. So 1.2 theta multiplied by theta dot in the U theta direction. Now we can plug in values. So 1.2 times theta dot, theta dot is equal to 2. So this is 2.4 in the UR direction, plus 1.2 times pi times 2. So 2.4 pi in the U theta direction. Finally, let's calculate our acceleration. So our double dot is equal to d by dt of 1.2 theta dot. But we know that theta dot is a constant. We can actually say that our double dot is 0. Likewise, theta double dot is simply the time derivative of theta dot. Since theta dot is a constant, we can say that theta double dot is also zero. So we can immediately ignore the first term and the last term of this equation. So our acceleration is going to be negative r, which we said was 1.2 theta, multiplied by theta dot squared in the ur direction. And then we have 2 times r dot, which was 1.2 theta dot, times another theta dot. And all of that is in the u theta direction. And again, we get to ignore this last term because we just said that theta double dot is equal to zero. So let's plug in numbers for this last equation. Negative 1.2 theta is pi. Theta dot is 2, so this is going to be multiplied by 4 in the ur direction, plus 2 times 1.2 times theta dot squared again, so that's going to be another 4 in the u theta direction. Simplifying further, we end up with negative 4.8 pi in the ur direction, and we have 9.6 in the u theta direction. So what does this actually look like? Our position vector we already drew. We can cheat just a little bit and draw our velocity vector by noting that it's going to be tangent to the path. Actually writing it out, the ur unit vector is in this direction. The u theta unit vector has to be in this direction. We're going to add 2.4 in the ur direction and 2.4 pi in the u theta direction. And we end up with something that's pointing along the diagonal. So this makes sense. As far as acceleration, we have a negative value in the ur direction. So it's pointing out somewhere this way. And then a positive value in the u theta direction. So our acceleration is pointing out some direction along the diagonal. And this is all we need to do for our cylindrical problem. We have defined our vectors and we've kind of given a rough sketch of what they look like. So the last problem I want to do is the path-based system. Okay, so let's look at a car on a windy road. Let's say that this is the path the car must travel. The car is going to be moving along with a velocity of 30 meters per second, which is roughly 60 miles an hour, maybe 65. And we need to come up with some values for the radius of curvature of each of these turns. So let's say that this first one has a radius of curvature of 300 meters. That our second turn has a radius of curvature something closer to 500 meters. And then our last turn is very tight. And so this radius of curvature is going to be something like 100 meters. And we want to find the magnitude of the acceleration for each of these turns. For all three of these, we can completely neglect the first term because our velocity is constant. Along this u tangent direction, we don't have any acceleration. All the acceleration happens directly inward on the circle. For acceleration 
one. Let's call it that. This is going to be 30 meters per second squared divided by 300 meters. And this ends up being 900 meters squared per second squared divided by 300 meters or 3 meters per second squared, which is about a third of Earth's gravity. All right, we can run through the second and third pretty quickly. So this is going to be 900 meters squared per second squared. That doesn't change. Divided by 500 meters. And this is right around 1.8 meters per second squared, which is somewhere in the realm of a fifth of Earth's gravity. Finally, our last term, the top stays the same because our velocity is the same. Our radius of curvature is 100 meters. So this is 9 meters per second squared, and that's right around 1g. So this is the side acceleration that you would feel if you're in the car. So 1g would be pretty uncomfortable. Uh, a third of g would be noticeable, and then a fifth of a g you would hardly feel. And that's all the problems I wanted to do today. I hope this was informative for you and very helpful as you continue your studies.